The Morgan Report with David Morgan. Discover how to build and protect your wealth at themorganreport.com. David Morgan of themorganreport.com for the weekend in 21 June 2024. Well, summer solstice is upon us. First up, central banks to increase gold holdings in the next 12 months. This comes from the World Gold Council. As most of you that follow the sector know, central banks have really been loading up on gold more than their average over the last couple of years. And of course, this article highlights that and the fact that it will continue. What I'm waiting for is the next surge from pension funds, managed money, wealth management, that type of thing, portfolio balancing. And I think that will happen probably starting this year. More from the World Gold Council. Singapore Bullion Market Association looking to create an Asian gold hub. Earlier this week, the World Gold Council and Singapore Bullion Market Association announced they are working with local stakeholders to explore developing the city-state's role in the global gold market. The rapid rise of Asia as the largest source of gold buying has moved the center of gravity of the market, and this has created an opportunity for an international gold hub in Asia. Central banks and public policy lead at the WGC World Gold Council wrote in the announcement. It's interesting as they don't talk about silver and how much silver is being bought in China through the Shanghai Futures Exchange and Shanghai Gold Exchange, but they'll get there. Well, another Zero Hedge, and I haven't featured Zero Hedge in a while. Usually they're kind of at the tip of the spear, ahead of the curve. In this case, not really. Anyone has followed uh, the sector, especially on the silver side, knows silver demand and solar sector could squeeze silver supply in the future. If you've looked over anything that comes through my blog, which is a rather usually two or three a week, or you're on our mailing list, you know that I've shown a chart by Matt Watson that shows what the industrial demand will look like going forward, how much of that solar, which is the majority, and how that will basically overtake on this projection, on his projection, what the uh, availability of the silver supply is, which means we'll have to eat above ground supply in order to meet the solar demand. Thank you for writing it, Zero Hedge, uh, but this time I'd say you're slightly behind the curve. I found this one to be interesting, the Fortress of Servitude. Silver price must trade higher. Miguel Perez Santella, he attended the <clears throat> IPMI, the International Precious Metals Institute Conference in Atlanta, Florida, and there were several notables there, namely uh, Philip Newman of Metals Focus, Philip Baker from former CEO of Hecla Mining, uh, Joe Carvatone from the World Gold Council, and they got a panel discussion. And what Philip Baker pointed out was that in 2011, silver traded as high as 35. Really, if you look at the chart, silver peaked around 50, not quite there. In the last day or early April, excuse me, early May of uh, 2011. And then it <clears throat> got a big pounding down, but it stayed above 30 for almost two years. It dipped below it for a while, popped up back above 30 and stayed there. So really for a year and a half, silver traded above 30. So it's not as if it hit 50 on a one day deal and then popped right back down like it did in 1980. In 2011, it got to almost 50, but it stayed there. By the way, in 1980, silver's average price was $20 an ounce, three times the previous high year before. In 1979, the all-time high for silver in 1979, January, was about $6. <clears throat> January 80, a year later, it hit 50 intraday, but it traded the whole year above around 20. The point being is, as... It says in the article, adjusted for inflation, that silver price would represent currently around $48 an ounce. Taking this calculation into account, this certainly points to the fact that silver is significantly undervalued. Meanwhile, we're working on annual deficits. Yes, there are above ground stocks that keep the price depressed and there is no physical shortage of silver. But the wholesale printing of the United States dollar is most important in this valuation, hence my notepad calculation would say to me that a basis of a spot price of 25 an ounce in 2011 should now be trading at $34 an ounce. So he's making the inflation case and I think he does a fairly good job of it. This article is from Yahoo Finance, follow the money in metals recycling, why the big miners are jumping in. 
If you read this whole article, what they say is that copper demand could double by 2035. And with the cost of mining, mines depleting, and the time it takes to put in new mining uh, facilities, that this is going to be nearly impossible. So solution, recycle what you have above ground. You'll see more and more of this, especially with the push toward everything green as time marches on. Uh, it's a decent article to read. I'll leave you the rest of it for you. And we at the Morgan Report in our speculative section of the asset allocation model have been on this environmental for a long time. It's changed its name a few times. It's uh, debt-free, but very thin ice currently speaking, but they have a, an environmentally sustainable metal recovery technology that has been proven and it's non-cyanide based. And the way that the gold industry has gone or going with these very low grades averaging like 0.14 gram, excuse me, one gram or 1.4 grams or so is the average grade uh, somewhere in that range. You can misquote, I might have misquoted the exact number. Point being that almost all of its uh, cyanide heat bleached, like 80% of the gold mining now, which this, of course, would absolutely help the environment and get the job done at the same time. In fact, recoveries with this method or this solution is definitely equal to or greater than cyanide in almost all cases. So if you're looking for a rank speculation, you could look at this. Uh, by law, I need to say I own it. I do have for a long time. It's substantially lower than when I bought it. But uh, certainly if you're looking for something environmentally friendly that relates to the article I just showed you, this is one you might consider. So I've been getting some new members and having a one-on-one -on -one with them. It's been quite enjoyable. And there's a lot of people out there that really are concerned about the way the economy is going, the bail-in laws, the fact that you, your bank account, if it's above the 250000 arena in the United States, you have the potential to be bailed in. All this going on in the stock market, the world stock market on aggregates hit a new high, by the way. So the inflation monster, certainly with all these countries printing as fast as they can, has certainly sent stocks higher, probably will continue to do so. That's one place people feel safe, but how safe is it? A lot of uh, people that are in the know or insiders are bailing out of the stock market. A lot of the big uh, captains of industry that hold gobs of stock that are in their companies are taking advantage of the high prices and selling. Regardless, uh, you can talk with me for a half hour and I will definitely do my best to um, listen to your concerns and what you'd like to talk about and mitigate some of the fear because a lot of it really is just plain fear that's uns unsubstantiated. Yes, there's things to be concerned about. There are ways to unbank legally, ethically, and soundly and basically give yourself some peace of mind because that's something that we all would like is to have peace of mind regarding our financial affairs and basically most aspects of our lives. So I will be back with you next week with another weekly perspective. This is David Morgan of themorganreport.com. Hello, it's David Morgan again. The financial landscape has drastically shifted since the pandemic. The old rules, they no longer apply. Inflation is spiraling and traditional investment paths aren't making you wealthy. You're watching your wealth diminish. But here's the good news. You don't have to be a passive spectator to your own financial decline. We're thrilled to announce an exclusive limited time offer at the Morgan Report. For those who join us now as premium or mastermind members, you'll receive a complimentary 30-minute consultation with me. With decades of experience, I can help you navigate even the toughest economic climates. This is your chance to get personalized advice tailored just for you. But act fast, this offer won't last long. Whether you're looking to refine your current financial strategy or start fresh, this consultation could be the turning point. Imagine having direct access to insights that could safeguard and grow your investments during these volatile times. Signing up is easy. Just head over to ThinMorganReport.com as a member. Not only will you get this exclusive consultation, but you'll also gain immediate access to the Morgan Report Opportunities, a resource where we share our top investment recommendations and strategies. Don't just take our word for it. New members can try us out for 30 days. If you find the consultation and advisory newsletter isn't for you, we'll refund your money. Remember, this offer is only available for a limited time. Don't miss your chance to get ahead in this uncertain economic climate. Join as a premium or mastermind member today and start your journey toward a more secure financial future. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the offer or your investment strategy, leave us a message.
Until next time, stay smart, stay safe, and keep building your wealth.